Uh, well, everyone's here. We got a big party going. Hello, everyone. I'm Jay Cohen. I'm so excited to be with all of you tonight for a really, really, really exciting and wonderful evening. We are with the Israeli Consulate of New York, who has so graciously connected us with such incredible chefs from both Israel and America. Um, today, I would like to first introduce Chef Rocco Spirito. Um, everyone say hello. Hey, hello. Have- how are you? <laughs> uh, James Beard award-winning chef, healthy lifestyle crusader, and a number one New York Times bestselling author who's dedicated to proving that healthy and delicious are not mutually exclusive. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tonight it won't be boring like that, though. It will be, it'll be fine. We're going to real food. Real food tonight. Nothing healthy. Nothing, Love it. Nothing healthy. Just delicious. Just delicious. So. And as well, we have dish. Yeah, yeah. incredibly renowned Israeli chef, Inat Admoni, uh, such a huge fan. She's the chef and owner of Balabusta in New York, the fine dining Middle Eastern restaurant, Kishkash, uh, as well as the incredible falafel chain, Taim. Uh, and, and you're not only just such an incredible restaurateur, but you have such great books. You have Balabusta as well as Shuk. Um, thanks so much for being here as well. Thank you. Inat. Yeah. <laughs> So today's special is we're kind of focusing on like winter, cozy, warm vibes, all of that stuff. I really want to dive in. Chef Rocco, what are you making today? I am making a chicken, a chicken in a pot with chicken under a brick. It's called polo sotomatone. Uh, so we would use two real bricks uh, that you find on the street, wrap them in foil, <laughs> butterfly a chicken. We put it in a pan. We chop some onions, some herbs, some garlic. We let it cook for a long time, get nice and crispy, and then uh, eat it right out of the pot. I love it. Pretty, pretty and simple Tuscan dish that I think you'll be able to recreate at home. I love it. Hey, Nat, what are you making? Hey, I'm making Kuba Hamusta. Uh, basically, it's a Kurdish dish. I made already the soup. I'm going to explain you all about it. And then we're going to have some dumpling made with some ulina and some fine, fine bulgur. I love it. So this is how it's going to go. We're going to dive in. I'm going to be checking in with both of you. Anyone who's watching, throw in your questions in the chat. I will field them to both of you. And then we can just chat as you go in terms of what's going on. I guess we'll start off with, with Rocco because I see the whole chicken. Um, what's, the, sure. what's the origin of the brick um, process and, and what are you going to be doing? So uh, there are parts of the chicken that don't get crispy uh, during normal cooking. So if you use a weight like a brick or something else heavy or a pan, uh, you'll you'll press the flesh and the skin, most importantly, against the entire surface area of the pan, and you'll get a nice crispy chicken. This is a Tuscan style, so there's only three or four ingredients, usually olive oil, salt, rosemary. That, that's basically the ingredient list for this recipe. I think we posted the recipe online, so it's, it's up there. But it's, it's a great dish for interpretation. You can add all the flavors that you like, your favorite spices, dry, fresh. You can add citrus. You can add so many things. But this simple version starts off with a nice chicken. Uh, a, a good quality chicken is going to be super important. And we butterfly it. And the way you butterfly chicken is you turn it over and you put a sharp knife down the backbone and you cut down and you remove the backbone. Now, for some people, it's going to be a little bit difficult. So for you people, have your butcher do it. Save this because this tastes good. And then we start to butterfly the rest, which is cut the breastbone in half and we start to remove bones. How many bones you want to remove is up to you. But as long as you have a flattened chicken, you'll get the under a brick effect. As long as your chicken looks like this to start with, you'll see how it'll it'll touch every surface or every all of the surface area of the pan get you a nice crispy effect. So wh- why don't I continue to remove some bones while a knot starts? Amazing. Her delicious dish. So somebody just uh, mentioned, I see on um, on the chat that I come in upside down. So that's happened sometimes with me. Sometimes it just... <laughs> 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 Nothing to do with the camera. I'm sorry. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... Oh my gosh. All right. So I think, you know what? I'm going to start actually not with the meat. So I'm going to explain you. Soon I'm going to show you my soup that I already made. The soup have leek, garlic, celery, a lot of sweet chard. And I take the sweet chard stems and I also saute at the beginning with a little bit of olive oil. There is tiny, like a pinch of sugar. There is like quarter cup to half a cup of lemon. So it's a lemony soup, perfect for winter. 
and I simmer another soup, which I promise I'm going to show you soon. And I'm going to start with the dough for the dumpling. And usually hamusta, not usually, but sometimes the, the better version of hamusta made with shredded beef. But we, 45 minutes or whatever we have here, it's not enough to braise meat and shred it. So we're going to do it with ground beef. And I start now with something that's called Jerish. And this is a very fine bulgur. So I soak that already half an hour with boiling water. So I have, I think, the recipe. I send you two cups, but I put just one cup because it was a lot. I don't think I need two cups, so one cup. And then I have here samolina. We call it in Israel sole. It's the same samolina I use for my famous couscous. Now, if you can find, I'm going to show you. This is the Israeli solid. And you can find anything today, you know, over the internet. If you can, you can find it almost in any bodega. So yeah. this is farina. It's very similar. It will react the same. So now, so now we're going to put the solid or farina inside. We're going to mix that. We have turmeric. We're going to have a little bit black pepper. Don't need much and salt, and we're going to work this dough. Not a lot of salt, and we're going to need a little bit water. So I'm going to do it gradually. I don't want it to make it too wet until I have a very easy dough to work with. What's the consistency you're looking for? I feel like for kuba is well, one of those things that's so, so uh, technical in the sense of making sure that you're not getting it too wet. I know, but also if you make it too wet, you can wait half an hour and it's going to get dry. Mm. And then if it gets chunky and it's hard, you take a food processor and you put it inside with a few more drops of water and it's going to get back, you know, it's going to come back. It's very resilient. It's going to, okay, we need more water and we're going to let it sit and going to work some muscles here. <laughs> okay, here. Okay, this is working. I need a little bit more water and then I show you how this dough. Now there is a lot of, you know, there is some people that making like the rolling, the rolling a dough and then make like kind of, I don't see a reason for that. Then I learned a new technique for my cousin, actually, that she put in that ball on a big zucchini and make kind of a hole under. So she make the, the bottom of the zucchini. She put a little bit of oil there. Uh -huh. And then she, that's actually pretty cool. But to be honest, I never tried that. So, <laughs> and, I, and I promise I will one day. Uh, all right. So this is, you see, here. Now. Can you see that? All right. I want to put a little bit more water because, as Jake said before, it will get drier and drier. And I'm going to work. I don't want to. Okay, here. Yeah. And you have a little bit. You see, it's a little bit yellow. I like that. I love it. The turmeric is such a wonderful addition. Yeah. All right. So here I have a dough. You can see that. Very easy to work with. Yeah. Gorgeous. And I go. In, and after that, I'm going to move to the meat. All right. I can let. Uh, I'm going to put tiny more water and then going to let it sit a little bit. And wash my sticky ends. So just so you know, I worked for Rocco many, many, many years ago. And Ch Chicken Under the Brick was inspiration when I opened Balabusta in 2010. The flavor, of, the flavor of his Chicken Under Brick was still, seven years after, was still super memorable. So of course I took my twist and I make it much better. I'm joking. I, <laughs> <laughs> I have to no, say I the food it. at Balabusta is definitely very, very good. Much better in many, many cases. Oh, the no. flavor that you, think... you get in that food is, is unbelievable. It's a lot of love. Obviously there's a Thank lot of love going on. Thank you. Um, all right. I'm so Kupa is and... one of those things that it's so, 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 um, represented in different cultures throughout the Middle East. Um, what are your favorite versions slash, like what did you grow up having in Israel? So for me, it's very interesting. My dad was Yemenite. My mom was Persian that grew up in Iraqi home. 
So I grew up with a lot of Iraqi food. She came to Israel when she was 10. By age of 11, they already sent her to Iraqi home. And she lived there for eight years, all her childhood. So she learned all of that. And that was very, not beneficial for her, but for us, we grew up with so much food. And I learned how to make kubes since I'm very young. And actually my favorite is the fried one. And I like the beets one as well. And I like the pumpkin as well. And there is kuba ores, which is a rice kube that not a lot of people familiar with that. And that's basically rice. That's a, it's a lot of process because you mix the rice with ground chicken and yeah. then you stuff it with ground beef and then you boil oh. it and then you, and then you fry it. And it's a lot, a lot, a lot of process. And I make it maybe once a year and my kids not appreciate it enough. So I, <laughs> just, yeah. So, I uh, so I'm going to do, I have here one pound of ground beef. This ground beef, I have to say, it's lean one. Get 80, 20. That's mean 80 beef and 20 fat. This is have only seven fat. I don't know why. Uh, so I'm going to add just a little bit of olive oil. Okay. Just tiny. But try to get the right mix of, of ground beef. I have onion inside. It's grated onion. And I like to keep the juice because it's make the meat very moist inside. Mm. And then I have parsley. And I'm going to have around quarter cup. And then I have barat. Okay, barat. It's a mix spices going all around the Levant, uh, Iraq. All this region, and it's basically just, it's, I think barat means spice, and it's a mix of spice. Uh, each one do it a little bit different. There is definitely here, uh, ci the cinnamon, I think it's one of the things that lead in that, but there is cloves and sometimes nutmeg. Uh, sometimes I put in mind some rose petals and even dry lemon zest. So it's a very rich, it's very nice. It's working perfectly with meat and almost everything else. So I have some barat. Salt, more, a little bit more, <laughs> and then and then some black pepper. I love it. Rocco, I see there's a chicken in the pan. Yes, okay, so once you get the chicken uh, butterfly, this uh, essentially spatchcock, you uh, either remove some bones or you don't, it's up to you. The most important thing is that you season both sides and you have a lot of skin contact with the pan that the idea is to get the skin crispy and if you were looking when i put the chicken in the pan it's a very hot pan so the chicken reacted immediately and shrunk up so in that case the chicken skin is not going to be in contact with the pan so i help it stay in contact with these literally bricks wrapped in foil one for each side and and they just help keep the chicken in contact with the pan as the oil gets hot and remains hot and I'm um, using a, an induction cooker that gives me a very precise reading. So it's about 400 degrees. Uh, I set it to 400 degrees, it's 383 in the pan, which is the perfect temperature to brown and also cook. You'll get a little bit of a moisture retention with these bricks because it does act as a bit of a cover, which is fine because mm. I want the chicken to cook uh, all the way through anyway in, in the pan. You can throw it in an oven at some point, but I'd like to keep it in the pan if I can. In the meanwhile, we have uh, rosemary and onions to prepare. I peeled a, a big uh, yellow onion. I'm gonna slice that super thin. We're gonna throw that on top and check, check the color of the skin every once in a while by simply lifting it up. It's still very light brown. We have a lot, a lot more to go before it's too dark. I love it. You, Given are your, you going uh, to these bricks it? are li literally off the street, by the way. The, <laughs> someone's going to trip when they leave the building today. They're going to be missing two bricks. I love it. Thank you, de Blasio. <laughs> so, R Raka, you finished the chicken in oven? You can. Yes, you can if you want, or you can do it on the stove. Up to you. I don't have an oven in, in this little uh, studio, so I'm going to finish it in the pan. When is your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Last month, you missed it. Where were you? Oh, sorry. <laughs> so the onions uh, are a part of the sauce as well as a garnish. They're not there just uh, to add aromatic, you know, a foil aromatically. When they cook down, they become a part of the sauce. They also help cook the chicken. You'll see in a little bit, I'll add the onions right on top and we'll cook them down right in the same pan. 
I love it. Given your history with a knot, what's your familiarity with, with Israel, Israeli food, all of these flavors that she's cooking with? My, my history with a knot is purely professional. Let me just make that <laughs> yes. uh, We worked together at a restaurant. The way you said it was very uh, <laughs> dubious. Um, uh, a knot and I worked together in the kitchen with my mother, my uncle, my aunt, no. all very innocent. Yeah, at Rocco's. Uh, and this is. Uh, this recipe is published in this book, and this is the restaurant uh, a not worked in, uh, Rocco's 22nd Street. Um, you know, my my interest in Israeli food and Israel uh, came way before uh, I opened Rocco's and met a not. I uh, I was a young uh, college student when I first went to Israel in 1984, believe it or not, and I studied there in Caesarea for uh, one semester and one summer, so it was almost a full year in Israel. In 1984, very. Uh, I know you guys are thinking 1984. No one was born then, but I was. And, I, I did. Wow, really. I did. Super is, yeah. Okay. Super interesting experience. One of the most incredible experiences of my lifetime. Not only the food, but the people, the culture, it was a wonderful, wonderful time. And I've been back many times since and watched the food community grow from you know from very a very small chef community to now a super robust and amazing food community. Uh, and, and restaurant community, especially in uh, Tel Aviv, um, you know, right along the beach there. There's so many wonderful restaurants. Uh, time to go back, though. Time to go back. I was hoping today I would I would earn a honorary uh, visa for <laughs> vacation, so we can all travel again. For sure. So, and so not smelling smelling browning chicken, so I have to check it, make sure it's not burning. Yeah, that would be sure. embarrassing. Not burning, beautiful. <laughs> one, one very important thing, by the way, I forgot to mention, Jake, and then you know this, make sure the chicken is dry, very dry. So I when know. you season it with your salt and pepper, if you see moisture beating up, dab it with a paper towel or something to dry the skin. The more dry the skin is, the more brown it'll be, it'll become. Okay, there is another thing that you need to choose a good chicken. And after years doing that in Balabusa, yes. and it was almost became a signature dish over there, we realized that certain chicken react very different to that method. So the, or of course, organic air chill, like all this kind of, it's much better than to get like, you know, so Partial grade, much, yeah. much, yeah, much less moisture. So it makes the skin much crispier. Which, uh, okay. which brand did you end up going with? I think we got Mary's and some Amish farms. So oh, cool. um, it changed. Yeah, we used to get it. From the Artanian for a while, which they have great. The green label, um, green label is great from D'Artagnan. Uh, uh, Bobo chicken yeah. are fantastic. Those are also uh, yeah. never dipped in water. They're air chilled. Uh, and yeah. then Bell and Evans is what I'm using today. It's organic. It's mm. doing very yeah, well. Yeah, that... I love it. Anat, talk us through your shaping techniques. All right. So let me. I'm gonna do a new from the beginning. The, the main things here, you want to do it as thin as possible and not to have too much dough, yeah? The dough it's is delicious, meat. but you, you won't have more meat. And you have a nice layers that not breaking down. So you see, I have, you know, I, I went on a stool because I'm so <laughs> sorry. So I don't have a choice. I'm going to go down to you people soon, but for now I have to be here. So I, I work with some um, bowl with water. So it's helped to keep my end like moist and kind of like shape it. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So now, so some people making all this ahead, that's not how my mom used to do it. They make all the balls ahead and put it really nice. And then they make balls exactly in the same shape in the same weight. But no, um, I don't have time for that. So basically I take like a piece, let's say like that like a ping pong size, okay? And, okay. And now I'm gonna put tiny water on my palm. And now with my thumb, I'm gonna put it like, just like this. And, okay. And try to make it as thin as possible all around. Can you see that? So years back in Balabusta, I used to serve it for lunch. And because it's a restaurant and I can do that, I used to take the semolina and put inside the meat, the mix of meat, and I have in the meat some mint and a lot of other herbs, and then take like a cup of semolina for a pound, 
mix it and I have a great texture. So I have the beautiful soury soup. And then together with like kind of meatball with some molina meatball. instead of, yes. yeah, yeah, it was delicious. It's not the same, but you know, sometimes we need to cut some corners here. Okay. Here is the bowl I made, uh, prepare ahead, put it here. And now I'm going to close my fingers up. Yeah. Put a little bit more water and take it just like that. Yeah. And if we need to do some patches, that's fine. Okay, now this side, and then we're gonna put a little bit more because I don't wanna see the meat. And this is great. And we take a little bit water with the other end and now we're gonna press. And I want this round and flat shape. Can you see that? Gorgeous. Ah, thank I'm you. So, I'm so jealous. <laughs> don't be. Uh, just made it after. I will send you the recipe. I know, here. yeah, hundred percent. My husband's been begging me to make beet kubba again, um, so it, it, it is the season. Tell us a little bit about um, growing up in Israel. And um, growing up in Israel, it's different than growing up in America because I have two kids that growing up here. It's so funny because we always said, it's like something that my family always said, that there is such a freedom for kids over there. And it's funny to say that connect to Israel. But, um, you know, as a mom today, I need to shuffle and get my kids around. And it just now when they're 11 and 14, I let them go by me, you know, like shopping. And But in Israel, since I was five years old, I go and get all the grocery. I was cooking. I was... Like it was very, very different than how they, they, maybe it's me. Maybe I just praised them very badly. Uh, so, but um, it's very different. You what, know, what's the big going... difference? They not, they, they, they can't run around on their own here, right? You have yeah, to watch them 24 be, yeah. seven. There's a big difference. Uh, it's a big difference. It's, it's huge. Over there, yeah. my sister did Aliyah. She moved to Israel with four kids. And she don't need to deal with them anymore. They're taking the bike. They're going to friends. They don't need to plan date, play date. You know, that's something right, I miss right. as well. Yeah. I'm calling yeah. my friend. I'm coming. I'm on my way. Not even asking, right. which is for some people it's like, you know, but it's kind of much more casual. And she said, oh, I don't have time for you. Don't come now, which is fine. But it's not like planning a, a play date for like a month ahead and like reschedule because, you know, it's, it's different. It's much more. Can you more... imagine in New York City going to someone's house with a calling on, on the way there saying I'm on my way to your house they would be in shock they would be <laughs> no but you know with your friends I'm sure you have friends that you feel comfortable enough nah, to not for 20 years I don't know who your friends are but I can't knock on friends doors without I live without, uh... I, I, but so I live in Fort Greene and a neighbor next door the amazing couple is Greece and and She's Canadian, so she's always apologizing, and she's super nice. <laughs> and and that door is always open. And I go and I grab my sugar if I need, and if I miss coffee, make me like it's so nice. I feel like in Israel here. I love it. You're not. Yes. Um, hold up one of the the kuba close to the camera. Someone was asking. I'm going to do the nicest one. I love it. Amazing. About pink. yeah. It's it's gorgeous. I love the big the big round ones, the the flat ones versus the round ones. Yeah, there is many shapes. So we have a tear shape, we have a conus shape. Uh, my mom used to do this one, the fried one, always like that, but much bigger. The fried one is this shape, and the kuba beats usually it's round shape, so it's just like a like a small uh, tennis ball or big uh, ping pong ball. Um. But it's very different, you know, because my kids, my, my son Liam is 14 and in four years you're going to need to go to college. And in that age, I was going to military. So it's a very different state of mind, you know, it's, yeah. I remember when I lived there, um, my friends and, and older kids, I was college age, were in the military. And I could, I thought to myself, there's no way I could do this, that you guys are so brave. And uh, can you imagine your son going to the American military now? <laughs> Would, no, but I have I the best would, time yeah. of my life. I was a driver. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Uh, yeah, that it's not great. like everybody yeah. is in a in a front line. It's very. Yeah. Um, there is something there that I think you gain. Um, 
you know, I came from also a restaurant there and then came to the state and um, the culture of not snitching, the culture of stand together, that's something I learned in the military. It's like, it's a veto, you're not, and I remember in a New York City kitchen, one, one guy told the chef, it's not me, it's her in front of the whole kitchen, which it wasn't me anyway. But I'm like, oh my <laughs> God, right now in Israel, they will take a bag full of potato in the middle of the night and just like, gonna, it's going to be beaten too badly. <laughs> <laughs> so I love it. Yeah. All right. So I see the bricks coming off. How's the chicken? Yeah. So so the chicken is smothered in onions right now, and you really can't put too many onions. There's, this is all about the onions. That's what's gonna add something other than chicken flavor to this dish. And you know, in typical Tuscan style, there's just a few ingredients: onions, rosemary, chicken, salt, pepper, olive oil. That's it. The onions are gonna brown some are going to get very brown some are going to be less brown but they're going to add a lot of flavor so i don't want to move it because i want the skin contact to remain intact with the pan i still think there's browning yet to be done so i'm going to leave it and just watch it closely uh and as i predicted the the bricks are providing a moisture cap so it's having the effect of seaming the chicken a little bit which you don't want too much of you want just enough to cook the flesh through but not overcook the chicken. We're not really trying to steam or braise or use moist heat for the chicken. It's a dry heat process. So now the bricks, you know, kind of need to go on and come off and you sort of need to watch it. If you want to just get it out of your face, you can put it in the oven right now at 300 degrees. It'll be perfect in 15 minutes. What do you will idea serve with it? it? Yeah. What's that, Ava? What do you will serve with it? Uh, I, I was going to serve some Prosecco. Did you mean other food? <laughs> <laughs> Prosecco is going to be my side dish. Is that bad? This no, would be perfect right. with, with roasted it's... potatoes, with any yeah. green vegetable, of course. Uh, some le a lemon, you know. So, so I'm about a what is for in terms of chicken oh, sauce? With no, no. Al Balabusta is served with titim, which is the Israeli couscous, with uh, green mm. leeks, just the green leeks and dry apricot. But we had a huge problem with the onion. So I always want to do the onion because that's from uh, Rocco's, and I love that. I thought it's make the whole dish like so, like kind of sweet. But it's so hard when you do it in a mass production than one at home because it's make the skin, if you're not careful, it's ruin the skin. And it's can the moist, as you say before, the moist can kind of like. So I had one cook Here that started. I just want to show you. I had, I had to turn so, it over because it was ready to be turned over. And you can see why the skin is yeah. beautifully brown, very dry. Gorgeous. I love the other it. Side, the other side is now so going to finish cooking on the bed of where onion. Are you where are you located now? <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to text you directions. This Bring is red amazing. Wine. Bring red wine. I know, I have a lot. Uh, all right, I'm going to take the camera, guys, and I'm going to show you my soup. And now I drop slowly into the simmered. Let me see. All right. So of course you don't want to drop this. Um, I'm going to take you with me. Okay, let's see how we do that. And uh, I got it. Okay. So as I promised, here is the soup. Gorgeous. So I'm going to put a little bit more fresh chard now. Just a little. And I'm going to show you. I try not to move too much. So as I said before, I start with a little bit of olive oil. And then there is garlic. And first there is leek. One, uh, one leek. And then I have garlic. I have leek. I have a lot of sweet chard. And I have lemon, sugar, cumin, a little cumin, a little bit turmeric, um, and chicken stock. The best way is if you can put, you can put some bones inside. I love necks. I'm sure most of you doesn't, don't. So <laughs> I love necks. I would put some necks inside or some chicken mm. wings to give more flavor of chicken. And then, and look what I found here, guys. Oh, looks familiar. <laughs> oh, I know. Wow. I know. Another All lifetime. Right. All right. So here, so now, I'm sorry, it's very homey. Uh, here and we just let me put it a little bit higher but I don't want it to boil because it's going to break my yes mm. it's going to break it so I want it to simmer 
and it would be ready almost like gnocchi, you know, it's floating a little bit up. So now it's dropping like a, I want to say something bad, but I wouldn't here. <laughs> uh, we know what you mean. What's the time frame in terms of how long these are going to take to cook? Uh, now, half an hour. And if we don't have that, I will show you kind of halfway. Serving is just simple. There you go. I'm going to show you how it's. All right. I love it. Me too. I hope my kids going to like it. Oh my God, not, if you do not, you're going to pop it in the freezer and I'll pick up. Yeah, you can. You know, we have expression in Hebrew said, you can scare a whore with a dick. So here, <laughs> maybe it's too wow. much for the Israeli consulate. Sorry. <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're making me yeah. blush. <laughs> I'm sorry, but That's everybody always said, oh, I'm coming for dinner. I'm like, I'm sorry. You're not scared me. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> you can come. I can keep you so Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love it. What's going on, Rocco? <laughs> I'm speechless is what's <laughs> going on. Yeah. So, so what I did was I deglazed the pan with a little bit of my uh, Prosecco because uh, it tastes delicious and it needed some acidity. That's not in the recipe, but it's okay to improvise, obviously. And the onions are uh, reducing nicely. They're gonna provide a wonderful foil, an aromatic foil, like I said earlier, and basically a sauce or a natural jus uh, that will come mostly just from the water of the onions. There are a lot of Italian dishes that are made just with onions and no stock because the water that comes out of the onions is sweet and delicious. Uh, and you can still see that the skin of this chicken is intact, crispy, brown, exactly what you want. That's the chicken, that's the polo sotto mattone, chicken under a brick look. That is exactly, when I touch it, it's very rigid, it's crispy, crackling, that's what you're looking for. Is there an ideal size for your chicken? Uh, two to three pounds is good for a pan like this, but whatever size uh, you can find, you just have to adjust the recipe accordingly. I think the recipe that I published calls for a four pound chicken, which is starting to get on the big side. Uh, but that'll be easily enough for four people, at least two, two to three people. Um, like I said, is when you make when you make a lot of these, you start to lose uh, the quality that you, you the dilution that occurs starts to become uh, quite a bit. So you probably want to stick to one if you're going to do this at home. So maybe maybe a bigger chicken works a little better. I love that. And now well, you can make onions. Two. How they? Yeah, you can make two as well. Yeah, absolutely. These onions are all brown. Some of them are charred black, uh, but just underneath burnt. None of them are burnt. Um, they're gonna provide so much beautiful color and flavor. It's almost like we made French onion soup as well. Oh, wow. Stunning. And I'm using, and not, I'm using uh, this Breville uh, induction burner that, that we talked about earlier. You, you mentioned that you, when you first set up Bella Busta, you set it up all induction, which is you yeah, know, pretty brave. Choice. This one, is, this one is uh, pretty good, it has very nice controls on it and very, that's very true. precise. So. Actually, that's true. The chicken, that's true because we have uh, the right numbers on the induction always for the chicken on the brick. That's true. And I oh, almost, wow. okay. I, I don't you, know if I learned it from you. Sure yes. The same? So, yeah, I have to because sometimes, you know, that was, so this is a dish I basically took from Rocco's like and make it some Israeli. It was one of my favorite things I learned there. And it's funny because we got a first review and he said that this is uh, the best kind of like is one of his favorite chicken and I have to make it right, you know? And to make it right, I have to make like instruction that's a very easy. And with induction, it's more easy than to control a flame. So I said, okay, now it's your number seven or number 15 and you need to put it like that and then take it down and then in the oven for five minutes. So there is no wiggle room there. Uh, Very cool. Uh, for both of you, what has it been like these past few months in terms of how shelter in place has affected the way you cook at home, the way you cook for your families? Please yes, Rocco. You, you first. <laughs> Um, the last few months was a little bit harder. The first three months of pandemic was actually a blessing in the sky. I know it sounds horrible because 
Um, it, I'm talking really personally, like I did all this, I graze chicken, I, I, I uh, grow vegetable and a lot of it and vegetable I could never find here. And I now I like, I brought a lot of seeds, like amazing. Anyway, it was, I lost a lot of, of weight, which I know was for most people hard, but for once in my lifetime, I had a routine. I had kind of like time and I learned my kid's name. It's Liam and <laughs> me. <laughs> and they are great, actually. They're very great. So it was like t- family time. You know, I worked like a dog for like the last 10, 15 years, kind of actually since I'm 15, so much more. But so it was some time for us. And uh, and then after a few months, I get bored and I'm like, OK, this is I, it's bullshit. I thought it's going to be finished in a few weeks. And what, what are we doing now? And I start getting worried about my employees, you know, and we reopen now we close and we'll see um it's tough for restaurant business it's just like it's super super painful especially something like for example balabusta that can have outdoor seats and i don't want to sit anyway in the winter outdoor so yeah mm-hmm. rocco yeah so uh a lot of similar reaction uh i tried to uh, work in some restaurants during the uh, shut down and uh, was able to get some good work done. I did uh, a charity pop-up for City City Harvest uh, at the Mondrian Hotel for the summer, which was fantastic. We were able to donate some money to City Harvest. They do amazing work for food and security issues in New York. Um, but it's been, you know, it's a struggle. I think any restaurateur who tells you they know what's going to happen next year, 2021, 2022, in the restaurant business, doesn't know what they're talking about because we we no one nobody knows what's going to happen between the uh, you know the new uh, rules every day that get handed down from right. Albany and city rules and if there's a snowstorm so let's close everything down uh, you know we have no idea what to expect so I think uh, good operators are running very very lean if at all yeah uh, many have chosen to simply close because their employees can go on unemployment and. Uh, they don't have to, you know, hemorrhage money for uh, three, four months. But for some people, the outdoor uh, opportunity has been a blessing. For example, I work, I'm, I'm consulting on a place that has 100 seats outdoors now that they didn't have before. And uh, so it's, it's actually working out pretty well. We'll see how it works out in the, in the, you know, the next few months in snowstorms. That's probably going to be a little bit different. But, uh, you know, I think people are figuring out how to survive or just calling it a day and, and, and saying, this is probably, you know, I think every restaurateur knows that there's going to be a day someday when they say enough. And uh, this has caused that day to come probably much earlier for a lot of people. And th- that's okay. You know, that's okay. These are uh, very hard times uh, for, for everybody. So whatever you can do to survive, pivot to takeout, takeout uh, alcohol sales is a great opportunity. Now we can do that. We never were able to do that before. Um, and, and obviously other takeout is great. Rayos, for example, is doing takeout for the first time in a hundred years. Rayos is, is a place you, you could never get into. Never. And now you can do takeout. You can, you can order, uh, I think Grub Street or directly from their website, uh, Rayos, you know, which is incredible, right? It's the same food that people, you know, have, have loved for a hundred years. Uh, but the way Rails works is there's 10 tables and you own a table for a night of the week. They were only open five nights a week. So you can see 10 tables will quickly evaporate. So no one was ever be able to get into Rails. Now, now you can order Rails takeout. So for some people, there's new opportunity. And for others, it's, uh, you know, it means the end of the line. Uh, yeah. But most restaurants have closed. I mean, right, uh, and I, the vast majority yeah. of restaurants yeah. have not reopened. Maybe 110,000 closed around the country. That's a lot. Every time that somebody asks okay. me, yeah. So every time There's that somebody asks me, twenty-five thousand in New York. So. Yeah, so under ten around the country. So every time somebody asks me to predict what's going to happen next year, I said, "Wait a second, let me take my crystal ball out of the closet <laughs> and give me yeah. a few minutes to work it out." <laughs> yes. It really so. is anybody's guess. It really is anybody's guess. I'm very. It, old, it also old has old. been a, a bit of a blessing in, in that I've had time to be home and time to focus on other things that I wouldn't would normally focus on. Um, developing the Zoom classes has been really fun. I've really, really enjoyed doing these classes uh, with everyday people, watching them you know, cook in their homes very comfortably. I think this format makes people feel 
a certain level of comfort because they're not leaving their home, they're not driving, they're not hiring a nanny, they're not you know, coming to a strange place to watch a demo. And so they're actually learning how to cook. I've done many Zoom classes now during the, the lockdown and uh, I, I see people really cooking and really learning how to cook. And it's great because I can check while they're, while during the class, I can check their cameras and see what they're up to. Uh, and so I'm verifying that they're really cooking, which is pretty cool. Hopefully that sticks around. I enjoy them very much. Yeah. Mamba. So you're so I took the chicken out of the pan. I just want you guys to see uh, the skin is still crispy, brown, dry. I'm going to cut it, and the onions are now melted down and delicious and sweet. What is your typical, like, best practices in terms of making sure you have juicy chicken, crispy skin? Other than like, obviously you said pat dry, but are there any other things that people often make mistake when they're cooking chicken? Hey, not. I think it's the things we mentioned, right? First of all, buy a good quality chicken that is organic, air chilled, you know, hasn't been dipped in a, an ammonium uh, uh, solution. Uh, that's gonna make a big difference. Uh, the bricks really do make a big difference. You can see here that this is a texture on this on chicken skin that you, you normally don't see. It's super flat and evenly cooked, and that's because of the weight that was applied to the top. Seasoning, but drying the skin, making sure the skin is dry when it hits the pan, making sure the pan is at the right temperature, which was about 400 degrees on this induction burner, and then watching it, right? I watched it this whole time, 40 minutes of watching it, you know, checking it, making sure it's not overcooking, not undercooking, making sure the onions are doing their job, you know, so a lot of supervision as well. Love what it. do you think you're not? I'm thinking that in a restaurant, it was trickier. I was so worried every time. So I want to be, so we used to check at always temperature, but at home, it doesn't matter. So you see it a little bit undercooked, you put it back in a restaurant. Right. It's embarrassment when you send the chicken that is a little bit undercooked or a lot undercooked or raw. Uh, so I think there is a place next to the wing that you check in to see where is the toughest part to see that is not, uh, you can't really overcook it too much, you know, and if the chicken is great and moist, it's a great chicken. Even if you cook it a few minutes longer, it would be still great. So. And uh, use a cake tester. A metal cake tester is really useful yeah. in determining whether it's cooked or not cooked. You stick it in, there are two ways that you can use a cake tester. One is to see if there's any resistance. If there's very little resistance, the chicken is probably cooked. And then the other way is to use it as a thermometer. You put it inside the, the meat of the bird, thickest part, and then you touch it to your face. Your body is 98 degrees, 100 degrees. You should be able to tell how much hotter it is with experience over time. If the metal is very hot, it means it's probably cooked. I love yeah. it. So this is what it should look like when it's done. You see it's the crispy skin nicely rendered and then the juicy meat underneath that is not dry and not, doesn't look like uh, sandy. It's got a, a still a very luscious, moist look to it. Gorgeous. And not, you are still I'm, forming Koba. I'm going, uh, yeah, yeah, because you know, I have, uh, I told you I have my neighbors, I have my kids. <laughs> Everyone's getting blood. So I'm gonna put some, some here so you can see it. Where is my, here. Ah. Oh, wow. And it's going to be probably two serving. They're definitely, they're hearty. They, it's one that's not like you can have a whole, a whole bowl like meatballs. Yes, you can. Oh, yes, I can. but Here. I can. Yeah, yeah. Let me see if I can put it. Maybe I take the camera. Sorry. Yeah, take the camera. We can see because it looks, I'm, I, I'm so excited to take a look. Okay. Wait, not me. Here. Yeah. No. Yes. Oh my God. Can you see? Wow, now, that looks amazing. Let's see. Let's see. And and I want to break that it down beautiful. and see. Thank you. Here is more bowl for later. That, the the soup looks like it could be an Italian minestra. Uh, a green, you know, green Italian soup that looks very similar. There are a lot of similarities between uh, Israeli cooking and Italian and Mediterranean yeah. cooking. Yeah. All right. This is oh, perfectly cooked. Wow. 
and oh, it's super yeah. soft. Oh, Perfectly hard. thin dough. Yeah. That's the secret. Yeah. Delicate but hearty. Yum. Oh, I love that. Okay, here is my dinner. <laughs> so where is this? Here. And here is mine. I love it. Let's see it up close at Rocco's. Oh, wow. Plated gorgeous. Stunning. L little Stunning side stuff. light. <laughs> Definitely found its light. Oh, wow. This is actually amazing, surprisingly. Uh, actually, not surprised, but it's really no, it's good. Funny. Usually, I, 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 it's, it's, cook, I don't when always... When you cook for demos, it doesn't come out great all the time, right? So not when it comes always. out really great, it's like, wow. But, but you can fake I get it. The same reaction. Oh my God, that's the best thing. You can fake <laughs> it. That's, that's, that's easy. Nobody knows. Uh, but I usually use, I grew up with doing uh, only solet, only the farina. And I really like the new addition. I start putting the fine vulgar. If you can't find the jerish or jerish, like it's the fine, fine vulgar, take a regular vulgar. And if you have blender, just grind it until it's kind of fine and let it soak. And it's really make a huge difference. I have to say, it's like, it's like a real good, like, like Azura good. Oh, wow. that's, that. that's that. No, seriously. Favorite. I know. Azula is the my, best my... Coppa in Israel. Okay, they have a competition now. I'm, I love, now I'm excited. We, we have it in New York. Yeah, I'm in Fort Green, just so you know. I, I'm on my way. So here. That's it. <laughs> okay. um, well, thank wow. you both so much. This has been so much fun to just Probably have a so, night. Such a pleasure cook together and obviously luckily you both have, have full glasses of wine so it, the night has just begun and it's just going to continue with beautiful dinners that I'm very jealous that I do not get to eat you're going to have to fix that at some I'll have to fix the... that, I'm going to get cooking kubba and chicken, same time, mix it yeah. all together I love it and huge thank you to the Israeli Consulate of New York for setting all of this up it's been so much fun uh, for everyone watching uh, we have all, both recipes are in the chat the links for both um, which you should make immediately um, so thank you both and look forward to hopefully you. you at some point thank you. throughout all this thank you Jake. thank you Anna. it was such a pleasure thank you pleasure. mine we're gonna have to do this Absolutely in person mine. someday I know, I know. We will. All right, guys. Thank you. The Israeli Bye, consulate everybody. so much. Thank you, yes. Jake. Bye. Bye. Good night, everyone.